All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Myrna Molina. It is Thursday, January 13th. Um, I'm calling to order the Public Safety and Judicial Committee. Um, first item on our agenda is roll call. Brown? Brown here. Gums? Leonard? Leonard here. Sanchez? Here. Shepro? Davis? Davis here. Molina? Molina present. You have a quorum. Okay, we have quorum. Um, next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. I'm asking to defer approval um, per staff request to next month. Um, so we will move on to public comment. Um, we have one speaker signed up to speak, uh, Mr. Bertha. My name is David Bertha. I'm from the South side of Chicago. Everybody knows why I'm here. I want an answer to why Sheriff Ron Hain has refused to address my complaints against civil rights violations like the officer sitting next to him. I'll concede the rest of my guest two minutes and 50 seconds and give him a chance to respond. Okay. Uh, next item on our agenda is I'm our... still I still I, I'm, I'm still holding my time to speak. Here we go, dear. We, we don't respond during public comment, Mr. Bertha. Okay, so if you'd well, like to well, spend well, the rest of your I, minutes speaking, you're welcome to. I can. What you want to talk about? Let's talk about them bears. All right. I'm happy they got Ron, rid of Ryan Pace and Jerry Angelo. Oh, not Jerry Angelo. What's my man's name? Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy. Nagy never had a clear offense, did he? Couldn't tell what was going on. Like, I can't tell what's going on with this committee. I'm here. I'm a person. You can't ignore me forever. My lawsuits are real. I'll take my time with this. Anybody can speak at any time. There's no need for public comment, but Rochelle Conant knows my name, right? You know me, Rochelle. What's happening? How you feeling? You feeling real secure in your job security right now? What happens when we go to the discovery phase of my lawsuit, Rochelle? You don't even want the thought of me putting you on the stand. Hey, Jamie. What's up with that obstruction of justice case, Jamie? Evidence, Jamie. Press conference for Ludwig, right? I'm here. Unarmed. Y'all got all this security behind me. No record of violence. I haven't threatened anybody. If I did, y'all would have arrested me already. How much time I got left? I'm going to take my time with this. I'm gonna take it slow. And you know what I'm gonna do next month? We'll wait and see. Thank you, Mr. Bertha. Next item on our agenda is our financial reports. Madam um, Chair, do you, can I respond for one moment, if you don't mind? Yeah, let me just continue on to, we normally don't respond to public comments, so if you wanna wait for your- I understand, but it's something that I would like to direct to Mr. Bertha. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Mr. Bertha, I have read every email you have sent. I have read every complaint that you have filed. I have reviewed every allegation you have made, and I have found that there are no criminal charges that have been done by anybody. I am also telling you that your continued communication to the spouses of elected officials is a crime and needs to stop. Name the crime. 
Okay, our judicial financial reports are placed on file. They said I committed a crime. What's Harassment crime? by electronic communication. When you send electronic communication with the intent to harass. How do you know my intent? Because I one read it. Email, listen, one email, you should know better as an attorney. One email doesn't equal harassment. Two emails do, does not equal harassment. It, in order to establish harassment, there must be a pattern. No, if I sir, said, you are incorrect. Thank you, Madam Chair. I apologize. They file charges against me, Jamie. Okay, our judicial financial reports are on file. Uh, next item on our agenda is our Merit Commission. Do we have someone from the Merit Commission available to speak? Okay, their report is also on file. If there's any questions, um, we will move on to our KingCom. Uh, Ms. Guthrie, good morning. Good morning. Our monthly reports are on file. I also have some um, initial call for service data that I've included for 2021. Um, that's also in the packet. Next month, I intend to bring our 2021 annual report as well as a short presentation for the committee, just an overview of um, you know, KCOM activities and what we've accomplished in 2021. Looking forward to 22, as we've talked about in the past, we have next generation 911. Um, that is something we'll continue to talk about in the coming months, as well as state implementation and state deadlines. Um, we're, also close, we're also closely monitoring uh, any, any legislation that would impact our 911 telecommunicators and mental health. We have been working closely with the state's attorney's office on some domestic violence protocol, and we'll be doing some training in the coming months. Um, so, so those are just part of our goals for 2022. And that is all I have this morning. You know, any questions or comments regarding our KingCom? Okay, thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item on our agenda is our Sheriff and Corrections. Sheriff Payne, good morning. Good morning, everybody, and Happy New Year. Uh, sitting next to me is Commander Osmani. He is uh, the commander of jail operations. So as you guys know, I like to bring folks in from the office so uh, you can hear them speak on, on various things. So we just are closing out our end of year financials. Our reports are on the books. Uh, this is yet another year, our third year in a row that we're under budget by mid six figures at least. Um, and that's including all the pandemic response we've had to do and uh, giving some money to the state's attorney's office and all that good stuff. So we're very proud of our, our fiscal responsibility at the sheriff's office. Uh, our, as far as our jail population goes, we're at a historic low of about 350 detainees as of this morning. And uh, we're at about 70 people on electronic monitoring. So, um, you know, driving down our recidivism rates, uh, our crime rate for three years in a row is now down 16% in Kane County as numbers come in at the end of the year. So um, we're, we're, again, very very proud of, of where we're sitting. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Commander Asmani just to talk about our correction staffing during this COVID spike we experienced over the last month and some of the measures that uh, we're, we're kind of becoming pros at this uh, in managing a pandemic. So kind of the measures that we have in place to reduce our liability and increase everyone's safety. Thanks, Sheriff. Morning, everyone. So I just got an overview on uh, what we have going on in the jail. Currently, we have seven pods that are on quarantine. Um, we've been able to shut down two pods and combine them to uh, just limit the exposure. Uh, in total, we've had about 30 officers test positive for COVID. Currently, right now, we have four that are out. Three of those are on midnight shift and one is on second shift. Um, from testing and everything that we're doing right now, we're, we're hopeful that we should be, be able to come take most of these pods off with our quarantine lockdown status. Um, sometime next week, uh, as long as no more others test positive. Um, some of the uh, control measures that we've taken is, is uh, masks for staff, N95s. Uh, we've been issuing extra antibacterial soap for detainees, swapping out masks um, at least once a week or upon request, um, monitoring <laughs> symptoms for exposed um, 19 tests for anyone that's exposed uh, or symptomatic. Um, extra cleaning for pods. So we're just taking all the necessary steps just to make sure that uh, we're doing what we're supposed to do to get everyone through this. And the curve is definitely coming down. So with all of that, when we got up to 17 officers out, we uh, had to offer double time to keep uh, corrections officers motivated to come back and fill shifts. We offer uh, are currently offering for two weeks, time and a half for working their normal shift. This is to keep the wheels rolling and make sure nobody walks out the door on us in these trying times. So we're planning to end that uh, later this week. But 
I want to just put that on the radar for uh, radar for ARP committee that uh, we may be asking for some additional support when it comes to continued COVID response. On the police side of things, we got up to uh, nine police staff out at one point. Fortunately, we only have one out now. Um, so again, that curve is going down. And uh, this has been a, uh, a very fatal year for law enforcement, 2021 was. We actually doubled the number of police officers in the United States killed in the line of duty compared to 2020. Uh, fortunately, none here in Illinois, but you know, here in Kane County, this is a big testament to this committee and our entire county board for how well they support us, how well funded we are, how well equipped we are, how well trained we are. So uh, again, on behalf of the Sheriff's Office, thank you for all of that. Uh, just put it on your radar. Also, Department of Corrections is not taking inmates again, so they've shifted that burden back onto the counties. Um, and, and of course, that doesn't help our jail numbers, but we're becoming very familiar at dealing with this. We did reach a settlement with Department of Corrections at the end of December. We were talking about how we're up to 1.6 million and what we've tried to bill them for, uh, for holding their detainees. We were hoping for $95 a day. The max cap that they would give us is $35 a day. So at the end of it, uh, you know, we're gonna recoup about $600,000, but that's better than, than nothing. Of course, there is no time frame from the state. Uh, when will actually receive that money. So that uh, concludes my verbal report, and then we have two resolutions. Okay, um, any questions on the report? Um, I had a couple, Sheriff Hain. First one is how many detainees do we have currently that are holding um, for transport to? Give that number, Commander. 32. 32. Yes. And then my second one is um, when it comes to COVID testing, um, is all, are the detainees being uh, tested on a rolling basis or? Per symptoms. If because of the shortage of tests, we're doing it by symptom. By symptom. Yes. Okay. So we can do PCRs, but the PCR price ranges about 150 bucks per person. So that's why we're, we've put the jail on lo quarantine lockdown and we're only testing the symptomatic. Okay. And that's not, is that money that we get recouped from the state because testing should be free or how does that work? Not at this point. No, we're still paying for it. Okay. Yeah. So that's something that we should be looking into. Yes. Um, Okay, thank you. Oh, I do want to address one thing. Everybody should have gotten my press release on the uh, in custody death that we had earlier in the week. Uh, they just performed the autopsy yesterday and it was a massive heart attack that the gentleman experienced while in our custody. So just some closure on that. Thank you. And I'm Sheriff Brown with a question. Mr. Brown, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sheriff and, and your um, partner next to you there for your presentation. But uh, I do have a question. You mentioned the overtime that you're having to pay and, and the possibility of looking for some recoupment from the ARP. Um, I'm assuming, I wasn't here during the CARES Act, but I'm assuming, and I know Mr. Sanchez is in the room, but I'm assuming you're able to keep these uh, hours that you're paying, the time and a half and the double time separate from other hours. So you've got good documentation when you go to apply for this other reimbursement. Yes, Mr. Brown, we uh, again got very experienced in dealing with this. So we have uh, a code, a payroll code that we use that marks it as uh, COVID related. Okay, Thanks, thank you. Mr. Sanchez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Sheriff Hain, uh, follow up question to that. Have you guys, or as the Office of Emergency Management, um, started to go after a FEMA reimbursement money? Yes, uh, Office of Emergency Management is going after that. We've applied for it throughout the pandemic. Okay. Um, we received one response that we were not eligible because Kane County received CARES Act money. Okay. And the Sheriff's Office was a beneficiary of that, okay. but we're gonna keep going after it, yes. And, uh, and the dollar amount is not fantastic. I mean, we're talking max of, I think the last one was $70,000. That's just off the top of my head. But um, yeah, it's, it's not really enough to recoup the impact that we're experiencing, especially because we continue to staff the max vac side as well. Okay. Yeah, I'll follow up with you on that because um, there's some new information I've seen. So I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair Bates, please. Good morning, Ms. Bates. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, uh, Sheriff Payne, uh, I think you said that you're paying time and a half for regular time, um, not overtime. Has this ever been done before? Is this a, a standard practice or? No, Ms. Bates, this is uh, just your sheriff thinking out of the box as usual. So I, I need to keep the place staffed. We can't close the jail. So trying to keep people motivated to come to work. And, and you felt that they, were, that they might just walk out the door. They might quit if they didn't get extra pay right now. Call in sick, uh, extend time off, uh, just a myriad of, of different avenues that they can not show up to work. So I, there's not much I can do to reward them other than 
pay them. So we're only doing this for a two week period. So it's not going to be a dramatic impact, but it's well appreciated by the employees so far. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions from our committee or county board members? Okay, um, we can move on. Um, Sheriff Hain, you have an ordinance. Yes, so over the last three years, we've recognized that our fees that we charge at the Sheriff's Office for various uh, civil paper fees and foreclosures, et cetera, was under the cost of doing business. So we had uh, requested a, a fee study to be done. A couple other departments jumped on with that fee study, but this ordinance is just related to our increase in fees. And as you can see, uh, based on annual averages, once we correct these fees to the uh, the uh, number in the table there that's in the ordinance, we're expecting an additional uh, revenue of about $504,000 um, that we're losing out on right now. Okay, thank you. May I have a motion and a second to approve and discuss? Leonard moves. Sanchez seconds. Okay, Mr. Leonard moves, Mr. Sanchez seconds. Any comments or questions regarding this ordinance? Okay, thank you so much for the work and um, the amount that we're saving. I right. think it's great, or that we're yeah. recouping is, is wonderful. Okay, um, may I have roll call please on this ordinance? Brown? Brown, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Shepro? Davis? Davis, yes. Molina. Molina, yes. Passes. Okay, this passes on to our finance committee later on this month. Okay, and then we have a resolution Sheriff, sure, you want to go ahead and introduce it? Yes, this is just a housekeeping resolution. I know you guys have seen this conversation before, but it's an agreement between Kendall County and Kane County to house uh, our detainees in Kendall should the need arise. And it's just correcting some dates on a previous resolution. Okay, may I have a motion and a second to discuss and potentially approve? Yeah, Sanchez moves. Moves. Everyone moves. All right, Mr. Sanchez moves, Ms. Scum seconds. Any comments or questions? Okay, uh, may I please have roll call? Brown? Brown, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Shepro? Davis? Davis, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. yes thank you. Okay, this passes and we'll move on to our executive committee. Okay, Sheriff Hain, thank you. Any other questions for our sheriff? Okay, we'll move on to State's Attorney, Ms. Mosser. Good morning. Good morning. Again, apologies for my dramatic entrance. I do have a presentation for all of you. This presentation is going to look very similar to the one that I did at the last meeting. Um, however, it's updated so that it is the entirety of our budget. I believe uh, Blair is putting that up now. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, so again, this is updated. So this is the entirety of our budget. What you're going to find for the budget is overall, again, that we came in under budget for the entirety of our um, expenses that we had, as well as we were around or above the revenues of what we expected. Sorry. So as you know, I do have several different portions within my budget that include special funds as well as the general fund. Um, again, for the general fund, you see that we went in under budget. You'll see for our revenues for the general fund, and usually this comes for the fees that are collected, we went above what we expected to do. I'm gonna go ahead and just go quickly through this. If you have any questions, just tell me. Um, our civil division, again, as you know, works very hard. We were able to hire uh, an additional attorney to assist with all of the work that has been caused as a result of the pandemic. We are still under our expenses in regards to our civil fund. Title IV is our child support. We assist with parents who need to collect child support from the parent who the child doesn't live with for the majority of the time. As you know, over the years, we've collected millions of dollars on behalf of parents so that they could support their children. 
Our drug prosecution fund, we were significantly under budget for this. And this part of the reason for that is that we had an attorney that left. And before we were able to replace her and put her a, a new person into that unit, you'll see that again, that's the reason why we we're significantly under in regards to that. Our domestic violence fund, this uh, funds some of our attorneys as well as a couple of the advocates. We um, had a significant amount of people that did leave in this past year, typically and unfortunately to go to positions that are higher paying than what we have. So again, we're under in regards to that because there was a delay in terms of hiring people. Um, our Child Advocacy Center, we had the same issue occur, and this was mostly due to the fact that we had a position available for a bilingual uh, investigator. Uh, we put this notice out everywhere we could and unfortunately did not have anybody who uh, wanted to come work at the Child Advocacy Center for the salary that was being offered. So that is the budget, very quick and easy today. Any questions about that portion? Yes, Sheriff. The Sheriff's Office hereby calls for a refund. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start charging you for other services we provide. Any questions for Ms. Mosser regarding the report? Mr. Caius. On the uh, child advocacy, you say you didn't have a translator? No, so this is a bilingual investigator because it's our belief that we should have investigators who speak the language of the people that they're, in, they're helping. And so the investigator not only goes out and talks to the suspects of the case, but also speaks with victims. And so it's much easier for a person to have to open up, especially about the horrible things that have happened to them when it's somebody who's not sitting there having to tran translate. And so part of our grant that we were given was specifically for a bilingual investigator. And unfortunately, we just didn't have anybody that applied. And there was no extra expense for uh, like having to hire a contractor or something like that? No. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, um, we can move on. You have a resolution? We do. Our first res resolution is actually asking to roll over some funds from our fiscal year in 2021 to 2022. A lot of this has to do with training. As you know, in 2021, there was a significant amount of time where we were not able to send people to training, the attorneys, the advocates, the investigators. And we are already scheduling people this year to go to trainings that we believe are going to be able to go forward. And so what we're trying to do is just be fiscally responsible and utilize what we weren't able to use last year in this year. Again, even with this rollover, we still come in under budget. So we're not exceeding anything that we did before. We're just trying to proactively plan for the future. Okay, may have a motion in a second to discuss and potentially approve this resolution. Sanchez moves. Leonard seconds. Okay, Mr. Sanchez moves, Mr. Leonard seconds. Any questions or comments? So this is $20,000 to be rolled over into this year. Okay, uh, may I please have roll call? Brown. Brown, yes. Thumbs. Gums, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. yes. Okay, this passes and we'll move on to our finance committee. I think I have two more resolutions. Yes. Okay, good. Yes, go ahead. Perfect, thank you. The next resolution is to allow us to participate in the appellate prosecutor program. So as you know, we are trial attorneys and on the trial level, we are the ones who take people to uh, trial. <laughs> When somebody appeals that case, we uh, can respond ourselves. However, we just don't have the means to do so. We do have a state appellate prosecutor program. And as a part of that, we participate in it, but we have to uh, provide funding for that. So the amount that I believe that we are asking for is $48,000. This is actually under uh, what we usually pay for them. They've given a discount because of COVID and because of less cases. Again, these are qualified attorneys who really deal with our cases. We work very closely with them with our post-conviction unit. Our post-conviction unit will uh, talk to the appellate prosecutors, will review the uh, motions or anything that's coming up and the, and the briefs that are filed. But again, without this, we would not have the means of effectively being able to argue the cases. So I am asking for authorization for us to participate in this 
Okay, may I have a motion and a second to discuss and potentially approve? Sanchez moves. Davis moves. Okay, Mr. Davis will move and Mr. Sanchez will second. Any comments or questions regarding this resolution? Okay, thank you. Okay, may I please have roll call? Brown? Brown, yes. Gums? <clears throat> Gums, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Okay, this um, passes on to our finance committee. And Thank one more. You. My last resolution is for the first time since I've elected, I've been elected into office to actually give money to the sheriff's department instead of the other way around. So um, for people who have potential warrants out or who have warrants out for their arrest and are in a, another jurisdiction or another state, we have to extradite them. The extradition is nothing that is done by the state's attorney's office with the exception of us handling paperwork. It's always done by the sheriff's department. Now, traditionally what has happened is the sheriff's department would do this and then would just send us a bill for all of the services and then we would pay them that money. To me, this didn't make any sense because it was them who was doing the work. So I'm just asking to transfer this portion so that they will have this built into their budget for the extradition. Ron Hain moves. Oh, I mean, Davis moves. <laughs> by Mr. Davis to uh, move, second by Sanchez. Mr. Sanchez. Okay, any comments or questions regarding this resolution? Okay, may I please have roll call? Brown? Brown, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Passes. Okay, this resolution passes on to our finance committee. Okay, thank you, Ms. Mosser. Thank you. Okay, we will move on on uh, our agenda to our public defender, Ms. Conant. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Happy New Year. Um, our report is on file. Uh, just a couple of additional things. As with all other departments, I'm sure we are dealing with spike in COVID numbers. Uh, last week, we had eight positive within our office. Unfortunately, hardest hit was our staff. Uh, so at the end of last week, we only had two staff members working in the office. Um, by the end of this week, we will be fully back though. Uh, the good thing was that uh, the dedication of our staff and with the help of IT, very quickly were able to get us set up. They all chose to work from home and have done a tremendous job at that, keeping us going. So um, that was very helpful to us so that we could get our cases opened and keep things moving along. So there was not much of a disruption for us. Uh, additionally, uh, since we have gone fully remote, we have again started our table down at the, in the lobby area of the courthouse uh, where we have a representative down there each morning, I, along with Hallie Cox from the law library, so that when people come in, if they were not did not know that it was fully remote, we have been helping to direct them and get them to where they need to be, get them help to get on remote and be able to attend court on time. Um, so that has gone very smoothly. Uh, we have not seen a lot of numbers down there, but a fair amount that it is necessary for two people to be down there. So uh, we are happy that we are able to send someone down and help out with that. And that's all. Okay, great. Any comments or questions, Mr. Leonard? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And, uh, thank you, Ms. Conant, for your report. Um, in reviewing the financials for the Public Defender's Department and the State's Attorney's Department, it was brought to my attention that there's a discrepancy in pay between the attorneys in these two departments. Uh, they both have equal education and experience, and there's a discrepancy of about 10%. Uh, I've also spoken with Ms. Conant and Ms. Mosser and with Chief Judge Clint Hull about this. And what I would like to ask those three people as a whole is to come up with a resolution that would balance the pay for the attorneys in both departments. Bring that to this department with your approval, Madam Chair and then move it forward to finance so that we can get attorneys in our county, not comparing to other counties, which were lower than, but make sure that the attorneys in our county are all paid equally. So if I could have your blessing on that, Madam Chair, I'd like to ask them to put together a resolution for us to review and possibly move forward. Absolutely, thank you, Mr. Leonard, for taking initiative on that. I think that's one of the things that we've been hearing from our from our partners is that not only 
are we competing with other counties, but we're competing amongst ourselves. Um, I think Ms. Barrera will probably have something to say about that too, but um, at least when it comes to, to this specific, I absolutely, yes, encourage that we review and look at. So thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Leonard. Thank you, Mr. Leonard, for all of your help on this and the work that you have done. Uh, we are prepared to go forward with that resolution. Um, I have it all worked out already, so we'll be bringing it forth. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions for our public defender? Okay, we'll move on to our judiciary and courts. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, like everyone else in the county, we've been hit by uh, infections and COVID. So this week we began virtual court again. Uh, we anticipate continuing virtual court until Friday, February 4th. Uh, hopefully on the 7th, we can resume back to in-person. Uh, this week we did conduct a jury trial. Uh, we summoned 60 people. We had 56 come in. And typically that's the numbers we would get three, four years ago. Up until recently, we would summon 60 in, in that number, and we would actually get 60, 62 people to come in because we always built in some play. So the public, while they're still, they're wary of the new variant, they're still coming in just like they did in like 2017, 2018. So that's good news. Uh, we are live streaming all of our criminal courts. Uh, so with the exception of this afternoon, which is all in person, you can go to our website and you can watch any traffic misdemeanor felony courts on the live stream uh, that you'd like. Uh, we are planning to give you a presentation on the interpreter costs that uh, for this past year. You may recall we came to you, we asked for extra people uh, to hire staff interpreters and coordinators. What we're finding out and what we're going to bring back to you is typically in any given year, we would spend 430 to $450,000, $460,000, depending upon the number of exotic languages that we required. Right now, from what we can tell, we spent about $350,000. The difference between the two amounts is that we are using, oh dear God, I went blank. The Interpanet, <laughs> Interpanet, it's, a, it's an internet-based company that will jump right onto our court calls. And if you watch the live streaming, you'll see it. They do not bill Kane County. They bill the Supreme Court, the Administrative Office of the Illinois Courts directly. All right, so we use that primarily in traffic courts and in routine misdemeanor courts. Now, you would think because our numbers are down, we'd have greater savings costs. Please understand interpreters are based on time. So if they charge $80 an hour, they charge $80 whether they do three cases or they do 20 cases, all right? Now, one of the things that we, so, we told you is if you give us this coordinator, we can get more reimbursement. And that's where our problem is. Because with the numbers we get back from the comptroller, we billed them like 380,000, they paid us back 435. And we're trying to straighten that out. It wasn't for free, but the number that when we send our invoices to the administrative office, they approve it, they send it to the comptroller. The documentation we get back from the comptroller doesn't match anything that we've sent in and it's difficult for us to straighten it out. No, I don't think we made a profit, but we'll, we should be able to come back and tell you that the costs uh, to you have been reduced anywhere from 150,000 to 230,000. I just can't give you a better number than that right now. Okay, and if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Naughton? Okay, we'll stay tuned to next month. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our court services. Good morning. Good morning. So some updates with court services, and then I do have one resolution. Um, so as you guys know, court services is kind of a broad umbrella department. Underneath court services, we have juvenile detention, three probation offices, Aurora, um, Elgin, here in Tri-Cities, and of course the Diagnostic Center. So all together, we should have just under 200 employees. I currently have about 180. It's been rough feeling positions, um, but we've been creative. Um, we've been reaching out to people. I, I've reached out to the administrative office of Illinois Courts and, and found employees that were on employment list for other counties, but weren't hired as going back two, three years. And I've been having my staff call them and say, hey, are you still interested in this field? 
field. You didn't apply to me, but I'm right next door. So I've, I've um, scrounged up another 12 applicants that way. So we're being as creative as we can be and, and really reaching out. Um, some of my other counties are upset with me for having done that or thought of it first, but hey, you snooze, you lose, like we're on it. So we've been trying to think outside of the box and, and keep going like that. Of course, complicating is COVID. Um, over the last three weeks, I've had over 30 employees be positive. The good news is that we're now rolling into the week three of this crisis for us. And so I have a lot of employees coming back, which is very good news. I've had to reduce some services, but we're, we're trying to get back. Um, unfortunately, I was getting a lot of emails this morning. I've got more staff out now testing positive, but that's okay. We're going to roll with it. We'll, we'll try to keep um, functioning as we need to as best we can for the courts. Um, as the sheriff said, um, we're testing the uh, minors. So we have 32 minors right now in custody at the juvenile detention facility. We're only testing the ones who obviously have symptoms. Um, unfortunately, every now and again, we do get them in with symptoms. Um, our turnover is such though that they're being released fairly quickly. We're working with the other jurisdictions on what, how to handle um, them and their positivity. Um, so we're, we're doing the best we can on that. Um, another complicating factor on the employment side, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, is that as you all know, we've been discussing how the state of Illinois is taking over a lot of the pretrial functions for the state. So they've posted now and they've begun hiring officers. They're posting, um, they're hiring for pretrial officers at the exact same level as our frontline pretrial officers doing the exact same work. They're hiring at 55,000 a year, which is 10,000 a year more than what we pay or what we start as. Um, and they're hiring hundreds of people. So I fully anticipate that we'll lose staff and we'll be scrambling again, because as you all know, we've reported, we're not going to go under the state's purview until three years out, hopefully in phase three, um, because our program is high functioning and doing well. So they've begun to tackle counties that don't have pretrial or, or need assistance. Um, so stay tuned on that. They just posted, I don't know what that looks like right now, but I'm unfortunately anticipating we will begin to lose staff. Um, but we'll, we'll try, we'll, we'll continue to beat the bushes and see what kind of staff we can come up with or what kind of applicants. Um, so that's my update. And then I have resolutions if you're ready. Okay. Or one resolution. Um, any questions regarding the report? Go ahead and introduce your resolution. Okay, so the JJC, um, unfortunately, COVID as well as other things have hit um, my staff. As we've seen in the national news, it's true here. Um, I have staff off sick, very sick, not because of COVID, but because they delayed other healthcare issues. And then they go to the doctor and they find out they're sick, sick. And so unfortunately, my kitchen staff has been hit hard at the JJC. I'm down to one cook at this point. So very grateful to the jail. Um, we partnered uh, using their food service provider, RMARC. Um, they've been able to step in and provide food for our kids. Like I said, we do have 32 kids. Um, and we also have our staff who work with the kids every single day. They can't leave to go eat. They have to be with the kids. So we have to feed the staff. Um, and so this uh, is letting you know that um, we don't anticipate a, a um, needing more money in the budget because, like I said, I, I do have some staffing um, outages. I, so I think I'll be able to cover it within my budget, as well as the fact that now, since I don't have cooks cooking food, I don't have to order food. I'm just getting it from our mark now. So it's just changing who that money's going to, but I have the budget and this is letting you know, I have an emergency resolution to go ahead and enter in that contract with them. Okay. May I have a motion and a second to discuss and potentially approve? Leonard moves. Okay. A uh, motion made by Mr. Leonard and second by Mr. Sanchez. Any comments or questions, Mr. Leonard? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Soss, thank you for your work. Um, in reading over the resolution and having the opportunity to talk to a few people about it, I believe the cost per meal through Aramark is $1.80 per meal. Uh, when you compare that to any other process out there, it's excellent. I'm just wondering, and just a suggestion, if we continue to have problems with staffing and stuff, would that be an option that we may want to consider just as the jail did? Um, yeah, and I will say that the quality of the food from our mark has been better than what we thought it would be, honestly. And so that is something that we are looking at. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other comments or questions? Okay, um, may I have a roll call on this resolution? 
Brown? Brown, um, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Davist? Davist, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Passes. Okay, and this passes. Um, this has, this, because this was an emergency order, this has already occurred. So um, let us know if you need anything else after March 31st. Thank you. Yeah, okay. it was a 12 week trial, and then we'll come back and let the committee know okay. where we're at. Thank you. I do have one thing for Ms. Host. Thank if you, you don't mind. Mr. Sheriff. So I just want to make sure I just confer with Commander Asmani. Please don't feel like you have to recoup the sheriff's office any funds from Aramark right now. So we're, we're so far under in population that we can absorb that 32, no problem, until your contract comes into effect. So you're awesome. I think we've already got, we've, we'll work, we'll talk. I'll make sure, we'll make sure they get paid and it's timely. Thank you. Okay. We're, we're happy to take care of it though. Thank you. Okay. Um, we will move along to our circuit clerk. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just have a couple things and then I want to go over my um, presentation, my annual report that we completed at the circuit clerk's office. Uh, we are actually down about 2,800 uh, cases filed this year. Last year it was 46,998. 46, this year was 44,137. That's new cases um, filed to court. We do have a uh, COVID running uh, ramp rampant through our office, unfortunately, and I have to thank all the judicial uh, partners here in, and especially the chief judge for implementing the remote courts to get us through this. Uh, we did have about 15 positive last week and some of those uh, gratefully had mild symptoms and are working from home so they could do uh, they could perform the remote courts from home. We have, everybody has work from home equipment. So we're ready in case something else happens. We have tried to minimize staff in the office. Unfortunately, we do have a lot of new employees, which is a good thing. So therefore uh, we do need other employees there to help train these folks. Um, we are in the midst of uh, union negotiations right now. So I really can't get into any of that, but uh, the disparity again is hourly wage um, that we all know is a problem at the circuit clerk's office. Uh, we have lost several employees to other offices throughout King County for about 10 to $15,000 more a year, which is pretty sad when you, when you look at what our clerks do at the circuit clerk's office. Um, we, we are uh, going to be applying for a grant from the AOIC for about $10,000. That's about all they'll give per county throughout the state. Um, they have roughly over 100,000 that they're going to uh, distribute, but that doesn't look like each uh, county will probably get maybe 10,000 at the most. So uh, we will be applying for that. Um, I would like to point out that the county board did approve a resolution for the animal control, um, increasing their wages and their, they are offering a part-time uh, assistant in their office for 35,000 part-time assistant in their office for 35,000. Our start is 29,250. Something to consider for um, the county board going forward. Uh, so I'd like to move on through this. Now you guys know I'm not, um, I don't normally use the clicker. So this is going to be interesting. It's working. <laughs> Trying to get to uh, the report. We are down, um, we are budgeted 105 employees. I would like to point out, we have shy over 80 currently. Um, we have been, we've had a hard time getting folks apply for positions at the circuit clerk's office. We have had a few new applications and we do have two um, going for background checks currently, so that's good. We have to space them out because we cannot train 10 people at the same time. It's totally impossible. 
Uh, it takes a lot to train an individual um, on the court, on our CMS, and um, a lot of legal ease involved in it. So it's not something that you just come in and sit down and do. So this is my annual report for uh, 21. Uh, I'd like to, I will correct a year that was pointed out to me. Thank you, Ms. Oust, um, yesterday. So we support 33 circuit uh, associate judges and circuit judges. We have 10 locations throughout the county. Our staff comes into our office, uh, picks up their, their um, information, whatever they need for the court. They, they let their supervisors know they're in, and then they head out to these locations. We have a budget of 77,639,140 for 21. Uh, we have a uh, total of all the cases filed was 48,000. That included um, everything um, e file included. Uh, we do take a lot of phone calls through the circuit clerk's office. We had a, a rough 67,000 uh, calls come through our office. Unfortunately, we are still um, not up with the county MITA. I always say that incorrectly system that they are implementing. Um, I, I truly hope that we would have been first, but since our office is so large, we are probably going to be last. That is one of the um, issues with working from home. You have to come into the office to answer the phones. We cannot uh, forward those calls. When you're a call center, you have to be in the office. With the new system that is being implemented, they will be able to answer the calls from remote locations. But like I said, we are um, down on the uh, chart to get that done. So there's 102,431 cases pending or awaiting um, impact evictions, foreclosures, et cetera, throughout the county. This is our list of our 21 accomplishments. I don't want to go over the whole thing and sound bragging, um, but we did accomplish a lot in the circuit clerk's office. Despite of COVID and despite of our, our um, staffing challenges, the staff there is phenomenal and they work through pretty much any issue that comes up before them. We assist other offices uh, with the CMS system that, that include the state's attorney's office, the public defender, the uh, court services, and also um, the judges. We train the judges on how to use the system, um, as well as other um, staff throughout the county. Uh, we have a phenomenal uh, IT person, Monica Lawrence. We could not literally operate without her and Laura Stegging, our two IT people. Uh, they are phenomenal. They know the system inside and out. They've, they've worked for the county for 30 plus years, so they know um, how all the statutes and what have you not work, and they do a phenomenal job um, for the whole county. So um, kudos to them. I praise them daily over the uh, New Year's because we changed into the record creepy manual for 2022. We literally work, th those staff members literally work the whole weekend, 24-7, uh, fixing any challenges that came up through the system that, that Tyler did not fix or what have you not, they're, they're known to kind of put us aside. Uh, they're working a little better on that, but between um, IT and my staff, they work the whole, the whole holiday season and uh, the, the court system would not be able to function if they had not done that. So that's my long list of accomplishments. I'm just briefed over a few of them. I did want to point out, um, I did put some fun pictures in here to know that we are not just um, working our fingers to the bone. We do have a few fun things that go on in the office. We try to keep the office light uh, with all the other challenging challenges that come before us with, um, and with COVID and you know, deaths and families because of COVID. Uh, we are, we try to do as much fun things in the office as we can. 
Um, our goals for 2022, we're uh, going forward with the state man mandated record keeping manual. We've, uh, <coughs> we, we are working on to complete negotiations with AFSCME, the, our union. We are trying to fill all our vacancies, which is going to be a challenge again um, due to uh, the resolution that came before. I'm, I'm a little confused with that, but we'll work through that as far as using uh, vacancies to uh, fill uh, uh, any type of um, position going forward or any increases in employment. Uh, um, so that's a little confusing. I would like this committee to really take a look at that and what it's going to ask of us going forward. Um, <clears throat> we are focusing on professional development and cross training. We are trying to uh, create floater uh, clerks that can work throughout the office, which is a challenge and that will require more funds. Um, and it will help in cases of pandemics or situations that we are all working under currently. Um, we are going to conduct an internal and external survey to see where our uh, where, where we can improve. We've updated performance measures for better accountability. Um, we have supplied the local prosecutors uh, equipment. We just did that uh, last week so that they could work uh, remotely also. We work with IT to get security measures up for them and they have received their equipment. Um, we have only really heard from one so far, but we have also trained that staff, those individuals outside of the county on how to work the system. Um, we're trying to implement a uh, work from home schedule or something to that. So that is another thing that we need the phone systems for. Um, and we are also trying, we, are, we want to, the chief judge and myself saw a phenomenal online mobile app for traffic fines and fees. And that is something that we would really like to implement for 2022. And that's pretty much it. Um, I do want to add, end with a, a, a kind of somber note. Um, from January through October, we, we uh, calculated all the fees that were waived by judges in Kane County for 21. And just for those 10 months, it came to $305,813. I know that folks are having a hard time um, during the pandemic, job loss, et cetera. But I know all of us here are trying to employ folks. And I know everywhere we go, it's the same thing. Um, so it's, it's just a, a little note that we all need to look at that we're also waiving fees throughout the county. And uh, those are fees that go into the general fund that pay all of our budgets. So that is the end of my budget presentation. If anybody has any questions. Thank you. Any questions for our circuit clerk? Okay, thank you. Um, okay, we will move on to our um, coroner. Coroner Russell, good morning. Good morning. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, go ahead. Oh, okay, excellent. Um, yes, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but uh, the... The evil coronavirus has struck our office for the first time, um, and it hit us hard. Uh, we uh, we had, of, I have 10 full-time employees, including myself. Uh, we had five out uh, with it. So we were at 50%, and unfortunately, two, uh, two of those five were my admin. So um, we're, we've been running a bare-bones admin uh, for the past week and a half, um, as a matter of fact, to the point to where uh, my the employee that was scheduled and or excited about retiring uh, actually put her retirement on hold for a week, and today will be her her official last uh, day in the office. So uh, yeah, it was it was it was pretty bad, but we made it through, uh, and we're making it through. Um, this office was here before the pandemic, and it'll be here after, and. Um, but we uh, administratively were hit pretty hard. We've still been able to, you know, push out the cremation permits and everything that needs to happen uh, for our, our funeral homes in the county and, and beyond. So um, that was 
that was what we've been dealing with the last week and a half. Um, I think it was about almost two weeks ago that we got our first case. So in the office, um, deaths are definitely up. Um, I can say that last week was, it rivaled any of the, of the top weeks that we've had in the entire pandemic. So, um, yeah, I think it was around 40, uh, people that we had that we recorded, uh, pass away, um, last week in the County. Um, so that's that uh, there's, there's a lot of, I wanted to have a presentation done. Obviously I didn't get, didn't get able, I wasn't able to, to do that. I was actually out working, um, and, um, assisting my, um, uh, uh, my deputies, um, with their, with their duties. And, um, but we will have to, uh, on the financial end, um, we will have to bring forth a resolution next month. Um, for the first time in my career here, um, I was actually given a budget that I can work with. And I just, I'm very appreciative of that, um, for the, for the board, for listening to me, looking at the situation and understanding that the past eight years budget has just been, um, well way under what was required. And I think that was by design, um, not by the board, but, uh, uh, by another individual who was the chairman of the board. Um, so, but anyways, we, we're at a point now where we can actually, I, I can actually <laughs> attempt to stay within budget because uh, I've been given a budget that is, uh, you know, in the realm of, of doable. So, but next month I will have to bring forth a resolution for last year, uh, which was the last year that I was given a, a subpar amount. So um, we will have that ready and, and answer any questions and I'll bring uh, forth any presentation and explain it very well. So that people understand and know what it is uh, that they're voting on. So, um, beyond that, uh, there is one thing that I'm working on right now in, in, in tandem and in, in conjunction with all the other stuff going on. Um, we've been in communication, the state's attorney, uh, the, the sheriff and I have been in communication uh, about possibly looking at a lab. I know it's something that has been near and dear to uh, uh, Mr. Davis' heart, and we're, we're, uh, we're continuing to go forth and look into that possibility. Um, the biggest thing for me is there's one particular um, type of uh, test that needs to be done for for me and for the police. Um, that's called GSR or gunshot residue. Um, tip, typically, you know, it should only be a few months um, for that to come back, and it comes in it comes in uh, importance, especially in in a possible suicide. Um, you know, we want to see if there's any gunshot residue, obviously on the victim's hand, um, that would indicate that it was a self-inflicted type of thing. Well, if we don't have that and there's suspicious, suspiciousness around it, we really can't rule. And right now the, um, the Illinois state lab is a year before we can get those results. To me, that's just not, you know, we put a man on the moon over 50 years ago, 60 years ago, and we're waiting a year. Now I'm not, blaming the state police or anything that they have a backlog just like everybody else. I just think that there's another um, solution to this. And I think it is having an in-house lab and we just, so what I've done is I've um, you know, I do have one fund that is funded um, through the cremation uh, permits. Um, it's our 289 fund and that it's, it's a significant amount. So I'm able to, what I was able to do is put together a um, feasibility study um, and I've got a couple of uh, very um, smart people, smarter than I, um, which isn't a which isn't a big reach, by the way. But um, uh, people that can actually look at this and give us some data and give us some um, good information um, on whether or not it's even fe feasible to have a lab here in, in Kane County. So something I'm, that the, the sheriff and the state's attorney and I, I think, uh, we're looking at, and we're. You know, we can't make a decision on that, whether or not we want to go forward, then bring it to you um, uh, until we know if it's feasible or not. So we've got that study going on right now, and uh, we'll be able to bring you some data to, to see if it makes any sense for us to do that or not. So, um, yeah, so that's it. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments regarding our coroner's report? Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Coroner Russell. You're welcome. Okay, we will move on. Um, any new business the committee would like to discuss? All right, um, can I have uh, 
Uh, consensus to place reports on file. I'd ask for unanimous consent, place reports on file. Okay, um, unanimous consent. Um, and there is no executive session. Um, so thank you everybody for being here. Um, please continue to stay healthy, take care of one another. And King County is a great place to live and work. So um, we're, we'll continue to um, sh showcase that. And thank you for our judicial partners for working together. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn? Leonard moves. Sanchez seconds. Okay, motion and second.